episode 134 of the Interpretation Station is called to order. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you are all doing well. I'm doing very well because today is the first day of the holidays. So, uh, no work. I'm taking a month off. I save all my holidays for the summer holidays. So, um, taking, the mon taking a month off. But that doesn't mean I won't be doing episodes of the Interpretation Station. Um, because I've got to keep you guys, got to keep giving you stuff, got to keep giving you material to practice on. And to be honest, I, I quite enjoy making the episodes. So uh, you're lucky, you're lucky. I'll still be here. Uh, in today's episode, it's a bit of a thematic episode that we're going to be doing today. And it's all to do with uh, in the theme of indigenous people. Indigenous persons, are they persons, people? whatevs um this is built so this was uh i think last week my final my, my final week at work um there was a meeting of what's called the mrip okay the expert mechanism on the rights of indigenous peoples known as mrip and i think they met most of last week i worked one day there and it's um it's interesting you get a big mix of obviously uh, the, the regular delegation speaking uh, a lot of representatives obviously of uh, indigenous peoples all from all around the world uh, now the big sort of UN meeting for indigenous uh, peoples takes place I think it's in February in in New York and that is called the um, the permanent forum of indigenous peoples that's a big deal so they all come in full sort of dressed in full regalia and there was quite a lot of them actually last week in you know full regalia and you'll have you'll lot have lots of sort of indigenous prayers given some of the delegations will start speaking in their indigenous languages swarmy quet quechua can be a bit disconcerting at times when you're working because you suddenly hear this foreign language coming through your through the headset it's like oh shit i should be interpreting this then you realize that it's that it's um that's one of the indigenous um languages so the one in so in in uh, in geneva they have as i say what's it's called the emrip the expert mechanism on the rights of indigenous persons now the big sort of the bible the uh, the foundation for the um these meetings for this fora it's all based on what is called the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People. And that is known as the UNDRIP. You can call that the UNDRIP. And that was apparently signed on the 13th of September 2007. Okay, that declaration. Now, in today's episode, we've got just a couple of statements to take from last week's uh, meeting of the mechanism, the MRIP. And uh, we have one by the Guatemalan delegation. Big shout out to all my friends from Guatemala. Guatemala is my favorite Latin American country. Okay, I do have some family ties. My, my son's godmother is Guatemalan. So uh, big shout out to Guatemala, favorite Latin American country. Big shout out to Puerto Barrios, great place. And then uh, the other one is something very unusual, actually. I'd never... It's a, it's a indigenous people's organization. But one I'd never run into before, this is, and that will be in French. And it's on the situation of Western Armenia. Okay? Not just Armenia, but Western Armenia. And, um, yeah, this, I've picked these two because they've got some good vocabulary interesting issues that they raise so uh yeah let's see um i think i had to do both of them during the actual meeting itself as usual i will leave the links to the original statements in the description box together uh with the transcripts i might leave an extra one i'll see actually how i go i have another statement a third one here by what's called the indigenous women of quebec and depending on how quickly i get through these two i might Look at that one as well, but I'll leave the um, I'll leave the transcript to it, and I'll leave uh, the uh, the link tag to get to the original uh, audio. So, without any further ado, let's uh, let's take a look. Let's I'll share the screen with you, and we'll take a look at what the uh, Guatemalans had to say. So, the actual name of this meeting 
So you see it here. If I call, recall rightly, you're saying a study on treaties, agreements, and other constructive arrangements between indigenous peoples and states, including peace accords and reconciliation, reconciliation initiatives and their constitutional recognition. So as you can see, this was on the 15th session of the of MRIP. You'll see in the actual Spanish, they use the acronym MEDPI. Okay, Mecanismo de Expertos sobre los Derechos de los Pueblos Indígenas, MEDPI. Now, to be honest, usually the, 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 the Spanish speakers just use the, Eng the same as the English, MRIP, but there you go, MED, could be MEDPI. And this was on the 4th of July. So, that was my son's birthday, actually. This was love my son's birthday. You thought I was going to say American independence. Well, there you go. Um, okay. Let's see how I would do this. Oh. Uh, I'm delivering this, this statement on behalf of the uh, Presidential Commission Against Discrimination and Racism Against the Indigenous People in Guatemala. Juan Everardo Chuksum who for por motivas de fuerza mayor okay so i think in english we would say for, for reasons beyond his control reasons out with his control i think because i got the statement maybe right just before i didn't have time to really prepare i think i just says for reasons of force majeure i mean we, we do talk about in english force majeure but it's always good to remember that little uh, expression just when we say for reasons beyond his control, for reasons out with his control. Uh, se, uh, se estará incorporando más tarde en la sesión. He will be joining us uh, later on in the session. Okay. Uh, the state of Guatemala felicita la labor, commends, applauds, welcomes. The work of, okay, the Mecanismo de Expertos sobre los Derechos de los Pueblos Indígenas, the MRIP. By now, you know, they've had done lots of other presentations, so everyone's been using MRIP a lot. So, the MRIP and its efforts um, to build, maybe its efforts to construcción, maybe to draw up, to craft a state project on treaties, agreements, and other constructive arrangements uh, between indigenous peoples and states including peace accords and reconciliation initiatives and constitutional recognition. Now, by the way, just for indigenous peoples, okay, some of these delegations you'll find, they speak very fast. And um, I don't think this one was so much a problem. But uh, so I was at times using just, I was giving them the acronym IPs, okay? So this is one of those things you have to sort of think on your feet a bit if you're finding that. It's a lot of syllables, right? Indigenous people. That's six, um, six syllables, and if you if it's getting repeated over and over again, it can become quite taxing. Um, and so, at one point, I think I just said Indigenous peoples IPs. I sort of signaled that I was going to be using the uh, the acronym, and then I just started saying IPs, and uh, that can, that can that can help a lot. Uh, the study is carried out uh, in seguimiento a las, or in follow-up to, literally, or based on uh, contributions dadas a conocer. I think we would just say for the, you know, provided by, in this instance, contributions provided by uh, the then uh, special rapporteur uh, Miguel Alfonso Martinez. Again, you know, if you want to just um, shorten things. Maybe you could just say, you know, if you're a hari, you just say Special Rapporteur Martinez. Presumably they've spoken, they've mentioned his name before, probably. In his Estudio sobre los Tratados Convenios, okay, so in his study on treaties, um, conventions, and other constructive agreements between states and IPs, shall we say, poblaciones indígenas, chiefly addressing the theme uh, recognition of the right of indigenous people uh, to their lands and resources as well as to um, pursuing sin trabas okay unhindered so as well as pursuing unhindered in these lands their traditional economic activities i mean if you don't have the, the um 
the statement in front of me. In English, you would probably say as well as being able to pursue their traditional economic activities unhindered, right, in English. But okay, if you don't have the text in front of you, you don't know what's coming later, so you just have to process these words and expressions as you're going along. So you, it still says, means it still sounds fine in English, I think, to say, to pursue unhindered in these lands their traditional economic activities. So this is a big deal, obviously, uh, when it comes to indigenous issues. You know, their traditional... Uh, a good word to know when you're doing things to do with indigenous people is husbandry, by the way. No matter where it is around the world, you have these uh, these indigenous peoples out in, 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 in Siberia, wherever it may be, in Latin America. They're, they're often all... And, you know, they're, they're rearing whatever it may be, uh, cattle, horses, all kinds of livestock, okay? So that's a word that you want to have in your back pocket, as it were, husbandry. It sort of sums it up uh, quite nicely. Um, okay, where were we? Donde indica which states that uh, questiones, questiones litigiosas consecutivas. Okay, so questiones litigiosas. I would probably say in English you could just say uh, disputes, okay? Disputes arising from treaties or constructive uh, provisions that affect indigenous peoples should be discussed uh, at the national level. Okay, uh, so I mean, I guess for okay, litigiosus by itself as an adjective uh, in English, uh, we could say divisive ish, divisive issues, controversial issues contentious issues okay uh, so arising from treaties or constructive provisions that affect indigenous people should be discussed at a national level uh, we should also take into account okay if you want to make that neutral if you don't want to we merece también tomarse en consideración uh, it's worth also taking into account the international dimension of uh, issues uh, raised in treaties uh, in Guatemala, in the context of the peace accords, se uh, suscribió. So this is again, I talk about this a lot. These, you know, these uh, Spanish constructions that launch in with a reflexive, and how we best uh, render that into English. There was the, uh, the there was there was the signing on the thirty first of March, nineteen ninety five, uh, of an agreement on the identity and rights of indigenous people whose implementation registra importantes avances, whose implementation has seen significant progress, or you could say whose implementation has marked a major step forward, but has also raised retos y desafíos. I mean, I think that's always uh, a bit of a tauto tautology, as we say. You know, it's the same. I think... In Spanish, they mean pretty much the same thing. I think you can also um, just say challenges, just say, but it's also raised the number of challenges, pendientes de abordar, okay? Pending challenges to be addressed, okay? Or you could just say, but also raises a number of challenges going forward. That's a favorite sort of diplomatic, uh, sort of UNEs. In, US, in sort of diplomatic parlance, a favourite thing to say going forward. So well, however you want to process that. A number of challenges, a number of pending challenges to be addressed, a number of outstand for pendiente, another alternative is outstanding challenges to be addressed, or a number of challenges going forward. Uh, the MRIP study representa la oportunidad. I guess we would say offers an opportunity and um, el camino and uh, a means for the inclusion of indigenous people in tr peoples in treaties, agreements, and other constructive in arrangements, including peace accords and initiatives. Finally, El Estado de Guatemala. Again, I think you could be forgiven for just saying Guatemala, right? having to say the state. Guatemala. Now, this is an interesting expression, and it's a good uh, uh, example of how we uh, interpreters need to think on our feet. So when I came to this, I was like, I, I, I didn't really know what this meant, to be honest. Get that uh, just by itself. And it's one of those uh, um, situations where you just have to um, 
uh, you you have to just adjust as you as the rest of the sentence becomes clearer, and which is easier done if you have the the text in front of you. Okay, so what's I mean so, so what's missing here? Okay, finally, Guatemala <coughs> discussions by the MRIP on this study as well as to future contributions that may be required on the theme. So you have to somehow fill the gap uh, with something that sounds good. Okay, so to me, the most obvious thing, you know, usually when they hear, okay, when you, when I hear, okay, something proximas discussiones, it's probably going to be something along the lines of looks forward to, okay. Finally, Guatemala looks forward to upcoming discussions by the MRIP on this study, as well as future contributions that may be required on the theme. And what makes things uh, this expression all the more slightly confusing, shall we say, is, I mean, I looked it up on word reference, quedar anuente, but you can't find it. Okay, so anuente means willing. It talks about consent. I know the expression, uh, su anuencia. Yeah, I've heard the expression like con la, uh, con el pre, señor presidente, con su anu, anuencia, like with your permission, if I may. But I've never heard it used in that context. So I don't know if any native Spanish speakers, it, does that look, is that a like strange expression? Is it slightly arcane way of saying it? Anyway, as far so to me, it seems like they're saying they're looking forward to the upcoming discussions by the Emirate on this study. So if you have a better idea, do let me know uh, for that. So I'll just give you a quick run through then of a site translation, just very quickly see if anything else comes to mind, any more uh, inspiration. So uh, I deliver this statement on behalf of the Presidential Commission Against Discrimination and Racism Against Indigenous Peoples in Guatemala, Juan Everardo Chukzum, uh, who for reasons outside his control uh, will be joining us later in the session. Uh, Guatemala commends the work of the MRIP in its efforts to uh, craft a project on the of the study on into uh, treaties, agreements, and other constructive arrangements between indigenous peoples, IPs, and states, uh, including uh, peace accords and reconciliation initiatives and their constitutional recognition. Uh, the study is carried out based on contributions provided by the then Special Rapporteur Miguel Alfonso Martinez in his study on treaties, agreements and other constructive arrangements between states and IPs, tra tackling chiefly the theme of recognition of the right of IPs to their lands and resources, as well as to pursuing unhindered in these lands their traditional economic activities. It points out that uh, disputes arising from uh, treaties or constructive Visions that affect IPs should be discussed at a national level. It's also worth taking into account the international dimension of the problems raised in those treaties. Uh, in Guatemala, in the context of the peace accords, uh, there was the signing on 31st of March 1995 an agree, an agree, of an agreement on identity and rights of IPs, whose implementation has seen significant progress but has also raised uh, challenges going forward. The MRIP study uh, offers an opportunity and a uh, means for the inclusion of indigenous peoples in treaties, agreements and other constructive arrangements, including peace accords and initiatives. Finally, Guatemala looks forward to upcoming discussions uh, by the MRIP on this study, as well as to future contributions that may be required on this theme. By the way, just the one thing I'd say in, during my um, swift, speedy site translation, notice here, I this this whole paragraph is actually one sentence all the way from estudio all the way down to here to in an ambito nacional right and you will notice so i gave the theme okay the rec recognition of the right blah 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 donde indica so basically i made it a, a new sentence here and it po it po so i just said you know it it points out that uh, disputes arising from treaties and constructive arrangements provisions etc that's just to remind you, a very important skill to be able to perform, to be able to pull off well in Spanish, is to break up the long, rambling sentences into shorter, more manageable sentences. Okay, so that's, uh, that's Guatemala for you. So now let's have a look at the French. So, Human Rights Council expert mecha. So there you go, in the French, they say le mid pas. Okay, mécanisme d'experts sur les droits. The peuple autochtone. Okay, so in, in French, the word for indigenous is autochtone. I know in English you have a word, um, autochtone, 
we, that is used, but I say generally in English, you want to just be going with um, indigenous. So this is the National Council of Western Armenia. Now, for those of you who didn't know, and that was me, I was one of the people who didn't know. It's always Western Armenia, okay, quoting Wikipedia here. Western Armenia is a term to refer to the eastern parts of Turkey. So it's actually Turkey. Western Armenia is in Turkey. Formerly the Ottoman Empire that are part of the historical homeland of the Armenians. Western Armenia, also referred to as Byzantine Armenia, emerged following the division of Greater Armenia between the Byzantine Empire and Sassanid Persia in 387 AD. The area was conquered by the Ottomans in the 16th century during the Ottoman Salafid War against the Iranian Safavid arch rivals. Uh, being passed on from the former to the latter, Ottoman rule over the region became only decisive after the Ottoman Safavid War of 1623 to 1639. Can't say I remember that one. The area then became known also as Turkish Armenia or Ottoman Armenia. During the 19th century, the Russian Empire conquered all of Eastern Armenia from Iran, also some parts of Turkish Armenia, such as Kars. The regions are, they get a little picture of Kars there, and that now, okay, very good. See, an ancient, probably an ancient old church there, I'm, I, no doubt. I know Armenia, well, that part of the, the world is full of ancient, ancient churches. The region's Armenian population was affected during the widespread massacres of Armenians in the 1890s. The Armenians living in their ancestral lands were exterminated or deported by Ottoman forces during the 1915 Armenian Genocide. That's important, just general knowledge things to, to, to know the, the Armenian Genocide during World War I. And over the following years, the systematic destruction of Armenian cultural heritage, which has endured over 4,000 years, is considered an example of cultural genocide. Okay, there's a picture for you there. I know this is a controversial issue. It does get mentioned, it does come up periodically, the issue of Armenia and the genocide, because it's not universally recognized as a genocide. Some countries, I know Turkey, for example, doesn't recognize it as a genocide. So it's a, it is a, as we said in uh, Spanish, it's a, a kiss. I think we can safely say that it's a question litigiosa. Um, assimilated and crypto Armenians still live in the area today, and some irredentist Armenians claim it as a part of United Armenia. So there is the most notable political party with these views is the Armenian Revolutionary Federation. And there you go. That's a useful word. No, irredentism. Irredentism is the doctrine of political popular movements that claim and seek to occupy territory considered lost to the nation based on history or legend. The scope is occasionally subject to disputes about underlying claims of expansion. This is a word that you will come across every now and then. I think it, fortunately, I think in, in all the languages, it's more or less the same. Irredentisme, el irredentismo. But it's always good to know what it what actually bloody well means. So there you go. So that's the, the West and the Armenia. Just a tiny bit of background uh, for you. Um, so the Western Armenia, what is known as Western Armenia, is actually it's located within modern day Turkey. And now this treaty will be actually mentioned during the statement. The Treaty of Sevres, 1920, the planned partition of the Ottoman Empire. So there you can see it was all carved up. The plan was to, for all the sort of colonial powers to carve it up between them. Okay, so let's uh, let's have a look at the statement. So we'll start from here. In fact, okay, President, I think it was a chairman actually in this meeting it was a chair chairman let me congratulate you on your election i'd like to thank the experts uh concerning the report that's being concours de libération that's being drawn up that's being developed which was uh presented to us under item three of the agenda nevertheless i note that my uh mon dossier juridique there's quite a personal element to this this statement okay so this guy's obviously been submitting 
uh, various communications to the UN. So my uh, legal dossier, okay, sent on 31st January 2022 as requested. And vous avez bien accusé ré réception, okay. Accusé réception, it's a very really high register way of saying that you've acknowledged receipt of it, okay. That accusé, to those of you who, maybe who are younger, um, it's very high, you can, you can accusé, Quite a, some surprising things you find as you go accusé en retard. You know, there's been a delay. Um, they, this word, I mean, that we would never use in that context in English. I mean, when we say accusé, we tend to accuse people. But uh, in French, you have accusé réception, il y a accusé une retard. Um, just so, just be wary of that. It's not always to accuse. Uh, n'a pas fait pour le moment l'objet d'une prise en compte en ce rapport. Has not for, has not for now been uh, prise en compte, not been reflected in this report. Uh, I find that's a reflect is just a good quick way of often doing prendre en compte, prise en compte, rather than say, which has not for now been taken into consideration. Taken into con, taken into consideration. Nine syllables. Reflected three syllables, okay. In especially as the Armenian nation uh, is part not only of uh, indigenous nations but also of the first states uh, who were at the origin of the existence of structures of state throughout the world that today are sitting in the United Nations that are. Um, so yeah, siégeant au sein de l'ONU, sitting within the UN, who are in session at the United Nations, something like that. Uh, the issue of Western Armenia is uh, undoubtedly a delicate matter because it is an indigenous state uh, that has been recognized since 1917 by over 20 other states who today who are still subjects of international law it's very it's very legalistic this statement okay uh, the subjects of international law including russia france us japan great britain italy turkey argentina brazil greece romania and which is suffering to this very day jusqu'à ce jour to this very day an occupation territorial a territorial uh, occupation, maybe a skisubi who are subject to a territorial occupation. <clears throat> the fact que ces états, the fact that these states committed on the basis of several agreements, even treaties, uh, including an arbitral sentence arbitral. I think the the safe word in English really to go for with it, something like that sentence is just a ruling. I think a ruling can cover pretty much a verdict and a sentence. Sometimes it's hard because I don't think this is the sentence as we would say it in, in English. Like a sentence, we tend to talk about prison sentence. Okay, you've been found guilty and you're getting a sentence of five years. So I don't. So I think this is an arbitral ruling um, to recognize our state of Western Armenia and its international uh, borders. Uh, official documents. Mise à votre disposition, so placed at your disposal. Again, that's just a good little set expression to have a, um, a sort of stock response for an English. Okay, this corresponds at the very least to a constructive arrangement. Well, I guess we'd say in English, this is this is tantamount. This amounts. This amounts to for charisma, at the very least, a constructive uh, arrangement towards an indigenous population that suffered a genocide of more than two million victims, and which received no reparation effective. So you can say reparation uh, again. It's always just good to remind you. Okay, my sort of set of four solutions for that idea redress remedy reparation restitution i always have those sort of four r's i think maybe the what, what did i say there's the most sort of um versatile i think remedy so no effective remedy to date 
other than uh, international recognition without any real uh, consequences either for les bourreaux, ni pour les bourreaux, ni pour les victimes. So les bourreaux, it's like the, the butcher, okay, the guy who does the killing. So I was thinking about this, maybe in English the best thing for bourreaux, for, for the executioners, neither for the, so it's the guys who basically physically perform the, the, the killing, okay, neither for the executioners nor for the victims. So it means that the victims haven't received any compensation, and it means that the executioners, the perpetrators, haven't been brought to justice for, for their crimes, uh, even though treaties have been signed. Uh, J'en veux pour preuve. Again, this is a pretty high register French way of saying. Take, for example. Okay. The Treaty of Sèvres, as we looked at, uh, ratified by a number of states and applied by others who haven't, though, uh, ratified it. Uh, the legal issue of Western Armenia, of its population and of its civilization, a valeur d'exemple à étudier. So maybe in English we would say, with the benefit of time, we'd say, should be a case study for all indigenous peoples who envisage uh, the implementation or the application of the right to self-determination and self-governance. What else do we say in English? We say it should be a textbook case. Okay, it should be a case study. It should be a textbook case for all indigenous peoples. Okay, and so they talk about you know self-determination and self-governance. These are big matters when it comes to indigenous peoples. Their right, you know, to, to govern themselves, even though they're a part of a bigger state. Uh, this issue is relevant because it's precisely by uh, negation, but the denial, or the negation, we can say in English, the negation of these internationally recognized rights que l'Azerbaïdjan s'est permis de déclencher en 2020. Uh, the, uh, the Azerbaijan, I would probably just, this s'est permis... I'd probably just unleashed, okay, they unleashed in 2020 a military conflict. If you really want to try and render that notion of the Sepermia, maybe you would say in English, that Azerbaijan went so far as to unleash in 2020, had the goal to, had the temerity to uh, unleash in 2020 a military conflict against Armenian populations in Artsakh, uh, leaving uh, more than 15,000 victims pursuing destruction today that goes on today of the heritage of une civilisation autochtone plurimillénaire now this is a, the word that might give you difficulties because you're thinking okay I need to reflect the idea of these mill this millennia long okay now a good way of just doing that in, in when from from French is just saying age old. So the cultural cultural heritage of an age old indigenous civilization, claiming to anyone that will listen uh, that international law doesn't exist. Another word you'll get similar to that plurimillénaire. Okay, when they talk about this, so it's often to do in the context of civilizations. Okay, secular. Okay, that can be a bit of a faux ami in. Um, in French, okay, if you hear, yeah, the civilisation séculaire, okay, it doesn't mean a secular civilization, it means age old. Remember in French, when they talk about sex, having I mean secular, the word that's usually used is like. Uh, where are we? Par conséquent, as a result, the genocide of the Armenians continues. Uh, the facts demonstrating that a genocide uh, has been pursued over time while the crime has not undergone, has not been subject to reparations again or remedy. And nevertheless, even though the technical conditions would allow it in part, the conclusion is sans appel is irrevocable. I think is maybe the best way. Cannot be questions, that's the idea. It is it is in reality, impossible 
to definitively deny the existence of the indigenous Armenian nation uh, from its uh, land and from earth, the Sater, from its land and from the from the earth. It's a tricky sentence, this, okay? The re, okay. That, this thing that's crossed, that, this is basically, I wasn't 100% certain, but that, yeah, it means basically to score out. So I guess, you know, he's saying it's impossible to, to, to wipe out, to, to deny definitively the existence of the Armenian nation. Uh, as a result, the time has come to build an avenir commun, a shared future. I tend to go with commun, I tend to say shared, shared future. Uh, to call on states directly concerned by the treaty signed with Western Armenia since 1917 during and after the genocide of the Armenians de prendre en compte leurs engagements okay I mean again to take into account their commitments though I think again I would sooner say I mean with, with commitments I do tend to I like to deliver on commitments to deliver on their commitments and to work with us uh, on uh, better conditions for their implementation implementation is a bit better than application okay so let me just quickly take you through this as a quick site translation uh, chairman uh, let me uh, congratulate you on your election I'd like to thank the experts uh, for the report that's being uh, drafted, which was presented uh, to us under item three of the agenda. However, let's do a full stop there. I note that my legal dossier is sent on 31st January 2022, as you requested, and which you acknowledge receipt of, has not for now uh, been uh, covered in this report, reflected in this report. Um, the Armenian nation is part not only of the uh, indigenous nations, <clears throat> but also one of the first nations, one of the first states that was at the origin of the existence of the structures of state throughout the world that today sit at the UN. The question of the West of Western Armenia is undoubtedly a sensitive issue, since it is a indigenous state which was has been recognised since 1917 by more than 20 other states to that are today subjects of international law, uh, including Russia, France, US, Japan, UK, Italy, Turkey, Argentina, Brazil, Greece, Romania, and which today is undergoing a territorial occupation. Uh, these states uh, committed on the basis of several agreements, nay treaties, uh, including uh, arbitral ruling to recognize uh, that our state of Western Armenia recognize our state of Western Armenia and its international borders. Official documents placed at your disposal. This is tantamount at the very least to a constructive arrangement towards the indigenous people which suffered a genocide of more than two million victims and which received no effective remedy to date besides the international recognition without genuine consequences either for the executioners or for the victims, even though treaties have been signed. Take, for example, the Treaty of Sevres, ratified by a number of states and applied by others who haven't ratified them, haven't ratified it. The legal question of Western Armenia, of its population and its civilization, is a text book example for all indigenous peoples who envisage the implementation of the right to self-determination and self-governance. It's a topical issue because it's precisely the denial of internationally recognized rights uh, because of the it's because of the denial of internationally recognized rights that Azerbaijan took the uh, liberty of unleashing in 2020, a military conflict against the Armenian populations in Artsakh, which uh, left more than 15,000 victims, uh, pursuing destruction to date of uh, age-old indigenous civiliz uh, civilization and uh, claiming to whoever would listen that international law doesn't exist. As a result, the genocide of the Armenians continues the facts demonstrating that a genocide is continuing in time uh, even though the crime has not been subject to any reparations. Nevertheless, although the technical conditions would allow this in part, uh, the conclusion is irrevocable. Uh, it is truly impossible to definitively erase the existence of the 
indigenous Armenian nation from its land and from, uh, from the earth. As a result, the time has come to build a shared future to invite states directly concerned by the treaty signed with Western Armenia since 1917, during and after the genocide of the Armenians, to deliver on their commitments and to work with us on conditions for application. And if I'm not mistaken, it's just occurred to me, Artsakh. So when the Armenians say, refer to the Republic of Artsakh, that's basically what's better known as Nagorno-Karabakh, actually. And just to give you a bit of context for that reference to the Artsakh. So, I mean, if they say Artsakh, you probably want to say Artsakh, but uh, that's that disputed enclave, obviously, uh, in, uh, well, that's in uh, Azerbaijan, which is populated by Armenians. So Artsakh is Nagorno-Karabakh. Notice just how I made my life a bit easier as I was going along here. You know, I, I left out Dotom Pluska. I just said, you know, the Armenian nation. Rather than saying, uh, especially as, if you start a sentence saying, especially as the Armenian nation, blah, 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 it's kind of um, suggesting that the sentence is going to have a second half to it. Um, anyway, so I just thought in the mo it would be easier, and then here as well, que ces états se sont engagés. So I, I just left that sort of intro. I just said these states committed on the basis of several agreements to do this and that, and you just that gives you a one consolidated sentence. Ce qui correspond, and this amounts at the very least to. If you start these sentences with especially as and the that these states it kind of signals to the listener that you're coming in for a slightly longer perhaps more a sentence with a more complicated structure so it's often you know good just to keep your sentences simple so that's why i didn't really render these d'autant plus que que ce qui etc okay so there you have it so we've got a couple of statements there uh, from Guatemala. You've learned a little bit about what Western Armenia is. You now know what Artsakh is. You know about the UNDRIP. You know about the EMRIP. Uh, anything else you know about? What else have we learned about? We've learned a couple of good words for litigiosas. What I might do is I think for this episode I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave some a sheet with the vocabulary from today's episode that you can just basically download and look for these specific vocabulary solutions that I've given you. I might start doing that from now on. Remind me if I forget. Um, I think that could be quite useful. Okay, guys, if you've enjoyed the episode, if you've learned some new words, if you've learned some new phrases, uh, please do like, share, and subscribe. And do comment. Tell me what word, well, Tell me what new stuff, uh, if any, you have learned. Um, uh, I hope, as I say, you've enjoyed the episode. I wish you all the, well, I was going to say, I wish you all the good summer, but I'm going to be seeing, I'm going to keep making new episodes, so don't worry about that. So all that remains for me to say at, right now is that episode 134 of the Interpretation Station stands adjourned.